It should cover everything from right here.
worship this morning. It's so good to have all of you here. A special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us. We're glad you've taken the time to join us as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we look out at the, the sun shining on the snow, we remember how our Lord is with us in those times when we feel uh, the brightness of God's love and in the times when it feels like God is far away. Shall we pray? Lord God, we give thanks for the gift of your light, for the love and life of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would draw near to us as we worship together in his name. Amen. I invite you to rise as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. We join together in our gathering hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory. Before you, angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace, make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Invite the children forward for the children's message. Good morning. <laughs> you are very brave coming up all by yourself. Woo! Well, today's gospel story is about um, Jesus going out on a boat with Peter, and um, he says, hey, you should let down your nets for a catch. And it was the wrong time of day to do it. It was not a good time for fishing at all. But Peter says, okay, whatever. And he puts down the nets, and you know what happens? He catches an enormous catch of fish! And it's so big that he realizes that it is a miracle. That it's... Um, now, he had caught fish before. He had caught fish in those nets before. But it's such a huge catch that he knows that God had a hand in making that happen. And he is just going, whoa, I don't know what to do. And Jesus says, don't worry, it's okay. From now on, you're going to be fishing for people, which doesn't mean he's going to throw nets at people, does it? It means that he wants to have people come and know the story of Jesus, which is kind of what we do here, isn't it? We let people know about the stories of Jesus. We let people know how amazing God is and God's love and how much God loves us 
no matter if we're really old people like me or really young people like you. How cool is that? So we can remember as we go through this week that sometimes things that are totally ordinary are amazing because God is there right in the middle of it. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for loving us so much, and we pray that you would help us to recognize that you are doing amazing things all the time, even in the regular old stuff that we do. Amen. Thanks for coming up, and you can head to jam time with Miss Amanda. Ask any other people who didn't have the bravery to come up. <laughs> Our first reading for today from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And the Lord said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears, shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And the Lord said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 138, and we will read it responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. 
Our second reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And God's grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel as we join in singing Christ is the King. According to Luke, the fifth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and a crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken and so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds that your word and Holy Spirit would dwell within us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in our gospel lesson today, we are once again traveling around Galilee with Jesus. Jesus has continued to go around preaching and teaching, and crowds continue to gather. Sometimes it goes really well, like it obviously is going in our lesson today. And other times, like the last two weeks in the synagogue at Nazareth, it is not going so well because people are unwilling to hear the message he has to bring. But even with those conflicts and difficulties, the word about Jesus is spreading, and more and more people are gathering. And here he is, it says, at the Lake of Gennesaret, which is another name for the Sea of Galilee, and they're down just a little ways from Capernaum. And there are so many people pressing in on him that he's being sort of pushed right to the water's edge, and he knows that they are waiting for him to preach, but there's such a crowd right in front of him that he doesn't think they'll be able to hear. And so he looks over and sees these two boats, and without asking permission or anything, he just hops into one of them and says to Simon, put out a little way from the shore. And Simon, who is tired, and we'll hear more about why later, picks up the nets that he has been washing and mending and throws them back into the boat and gets back in the boat with the other folks who were part of the crew and they push out a little bit from the shore and Jesus sits down and begins to teach. We heard him do that the last couple weeks too, that that was a, a traditional way that rabbis taught was to sit down and teach and he's pushed back a little bit on the water so that with the reflection of the water and the way that around the Sea of Galilee, the hills rise up and form natural amphitheaters, people, if they had just a little bit of space, could hear someone speaking even without amplification. <laughs> and so it says that Jesus is preaching for a while, and you can imagine Simon Peter is working on these nets thinking, when is he ever going to be done? <laughs> the same thing you think every Sunday morning when I'm up here, right? <laughs> but he finally finishes, and he says to Simon, go and push out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And at this point, a slightly weary, exasperated Simon says, Master, we have fished all night long and caught nothing. Goose egg, empty nets, no fish to sell, nothing at all. It was not a good night of fishing. But if you say so, we'll let down the nets. Now, we don't know whether... Simon is trying to make a point and being a little sarcastic in this. But if you say so, we'll let down the nets. Or if it's more a weariness that he has to deal with this rabbi and show him respect and honor. Like, if you say so, we'll let down the nets. We can be pretty sure it is not an enthusiastic, if you say so, we'll let down those nets. <laughs> They go out to the deep water, and they had been fishing all night long and caught nothing. Why fishing at night, you ask? I'm so glad you asked. It's because they're fishing with big, heavy nets that are pretty easy to see. And so if you throw them out during the day, the fish can see them coming and swim out of the way. And so they fish at night with the hopes of catching some of the fish off guard, and when they pull them up, they'll have those nets full of fish. But they had fished all night long and nothing. But they go out here in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day, when the fish are obviously way deeper than where they are. They throw out the nets, they pull them up, and there's not nothing in the net. 
Matter of fact, Simon can't pull up the net by himself. He has to have the other people on the boat help him. And as they're pulling it up, the net is so full that it's starting to fray. All of that work of mending the nets is starting to come undone. The net is so full and they're trying to scoop the fish off and they can't get them out quickly enough. And they motion to the Zebedees over on the shore to come and help them. And they come out and both boats are scooping like mad to get the fish out of the net before it breaks. And they keep scooping and scooping and scooping and there are so many fish that it says the boats are beginning to sink they are riding lower and lower and lower in the water which means that it's more fish than simon and his partners have been able to catch in months now if you or I had done some nice thing for someone who asked us to do it, and they said, you know what, thanks so much, here you go, here's a two-month wage check as a bonus for you. We probably would go, yes! <laughs> and be thinking, it's Applebee's tonight. <laughs> but that's not what Simon Peter does. Because he looks at what's happened, and he's been fishing a long time, and he knows how this is supposed to work, and this, this is not it. And he recognizes in Jesus that this is not just some rabbi who is using his boat. That this is someone through whom the Spirit of God is working and Peter is afraid. He falls on his knees and says, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Because the holiness of God, the power of God, is not something to be trifled with. You may remember the story of King David when, after establishing Jerusalem, as his kingdom, decides to bring the Ark of the Covenant there to Jerusalem, that it would be the center of Jewish worship. And as the Levites, the ones who are specifically tasked by God with carrying and caring for the Ark of the Covenant, are carrying it along, one of the Levites recognizes, sees that it is tipping a little bit on the uneven road and puts up his hand to steady it and bam! That's the end of him. The purity, the holiness, the power of God is not just a boon to the nation, but it is a dangerous power. Once the temple is built, the Holy of Holies, where the Ark is kept, is a place by itself, separated from the rest of the temple by a curtain, and only the high priest would go in there, and only at the proper time, and only when they had made the proper sacrifices so that they were fully prepared to enter into the presence of God. And Peter looks at Jesus and sees that kind of holiness and is afraid and says, go away from me, I am a sinful man. It's not the first time, right, that that has happened. We hear that in our Old Testament lesson, the call of Isaiah, right? Isaiah sees just in a vision the temple of the Lord, the heavenly temple, surrounded by angels and seraphim, the angelic creatures that are flying, calling, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, that same as the opening hymn that we sang. And even though it's only a vision, Isaiah says, woe is me. 
for I am a man of unclean lips. I am a sinner and I'm undone in being in the presence of this holiness. And those, those words are the ones that Peter echoes. I am a sinful man. But Jesus already knows that. Jesus came for that reason. Because not only Peter, but all of us are broken sinners. All of us don't meet the holiness of God. All of us fall short, even in our best moments. So much so that C.S. Lewis says that were the angels to think our thoughts that they would be undone by the darkness of them. But Jesus comes to redeem us, to save us from sin and death. And Jesus goes to the cross for our sakes and rises again on the third day for our sakes, precisely because we are sinners, because we are broken, that through his death and resurrection, we might know the righteousness of God, be set into a right relationship with God and brought into the family of faith. So when Jesus responds to Peter, he doesn't say, that's right, you're a miserable sinner. I can't even believe you would still be in this boat. Nor does he say, well, everything you've done before was certainly a waste. Let's chuck that and start over with something good. Instead, he says, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. Now, Peter knows really a lot about fishing. And he recognizes that if God can use his ability to fish, that he's going to follow. Peter also knows that some days you go out and try your very hardest and work your very best and end up with nothing except tiredness and disappointment. And some days you just go out because it's your job with the hopes that you might catch something. And that on some days, when the sun is shining and the Spirit of God has jumped into your boat, something amazing can happen. And the joyous news is that if God can call Simon Peter, God can call you. That just as Jesus knew fully who Peter was, he knows you and me. And calls us to be the ones who are fishing for people, who are the ones who are carrying the good news of Jesus Christ and Christ's redeeming, forgiving love out to a world in need. And yes, there are going to be days when we are working our hardest and end up with nothing but disappointment. And other days when we just don't have a lot of heart in it, but we're going through the motions because we know we're supposed to share the love of God in word and deed because, you know, that's who we are. But that there will be also other days when the sun is shining and the Spirit of God is present and amazing things will happen. The 
because Jesus Christ has promised to be with us always.
several announcements for us to share together today. Thank you for your participation at the annual meeting last week. We are all set to take on another year. Thank you for your generous contributions to U.S. Together over this past month, working to make it a little bit easier for those 25 families who have come to make the Toledo area their home. Because of the snow, a number of different committees and meetings got rescheduled. So, um, so many different announcements are in the trifold that the calendar is actually not in the trifold, but in the last page of your bulletin. They had to get moved. So please double check um, any meetings that you might have had last week and see if they have been rescheduled. We lift up the family and friends of Danny LaDuke, who died this past Monday, and whose funeral is this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. at Mason Darden Walker Funeral Home in Maumee. And we pray for the family and friends of Sue Meyer, Derek Meyer's mom, whose funeral was yesterday at Bethlehem, Oklahoma. We pray for God's comfort and strength and healing for the days ahead for these families. And we continue to lift up Matthew Delaney, Ralph Henry, Mike Besley, Bill King, Sandy Pollock, Sandy Pinert, and Bill Oles. Shall we rise as we join together in confessing our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our hope, our light, and our life, we thank you for breaking into the darkness of our lives, that your light would fill us with hope and promise, especially as we meet that light who comes to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, like Peter, we recognize how far we fall short of the holiness and righteousness that you call us to. Help us, we pray, to cling to the cross, to the salvation we find there, to the promise of being redeemed, of being set right in relationship with you through it. And through the hope of the gospel, let us have the courage to reach out to a world in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, we pray for all those in need of your healing in these days. We pray for those who are hungry and homeless, especially in these cold and snowy days, that you would move the hearts of people to make a difference in their lives. 
We pray for those who live in the fear of violence at home and away, especially we lift up the people of Ukraine. We pray for those who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Danny and Sue. We pray for those that we name Matthew, Ralph, Mike, Bill, Sandy, Sandy, and Bill. For those who we name before you in our hearts. And for all those in need of your care, that they would know your comfort, your wholeness, your healing, and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Patient Lord, you call us to follow you, and so often we turn aside or distracted or get lost. We pray for all those who are charged with caring for us, our health care workers, our government leaders, our armed forces, our first responders, our teachers, all those who are looking out for others, often at personal sacrifice. Give them strength and courage, patience and compassion and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of peace with one another. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him, your beloved Son. In the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Oh, 
one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With the bread and cup we remember your word, dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look for the hope of his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. All who believe in the loving presence of Christ are welcome to receive from his table. Here in the sanctuary, we're using our pre-filled supplies, either the pre-filled wine chalices or the grape juice cups. For those of you who are at home, you're welcome to gather your communion supplies as well. I will be talking us through how to use them, and then we will all commune together. If you have the small wine chalices, I invite you to turn them wine side down and then peel back that top seal revealing the wafer and place it in your hand. If you have the grape juice cups, there are two seals on the top. One is a cellophane seal that contains the wafer and one is the foil seal that holds the grape juice in. Please only peel back that top cellophane seal and then then take that wafer and place it in your hand. Remembering all that our Lord did for us and our Lord's great love for us, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Now, if you have the small wine chalices, turn it so that it's wine side up and peel back that seal. If you have the grape juice cups, peel back that foil seal that holds the grape juice in at this time and a little more carefully because that cup is just a little bit more flimsy. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Congregation, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, gracious God, that we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn, Go to the World. Thanks be to God.